time to talk about Ohm's law of resistance and power. I love this join the resistance in Ohm because it's like people are praying. So let's see if this makes any sense here. First of all, we're going to define uh, Ohm's law. And I love, love, love this one right here. It's a nice little pun even involved in it. But the, the equation that you get in your data booklet actually goes like this. R equals V over I. That's the one you actually get. I prefer it to look like this. I like it better V equals I R. I like it better that way. But I mean, this is the same, right? V equals I R. It's the same, same, same. So let's look again at what are these different values again? Let's just remind ourselves. What is resistance measured in? It's actually the Greek capital omega and i love that because it's like omega see it's like oh my god that's a bad joke sorry uh then we have v equals the potential difference remember what that's measured in volts and i is the current what's that measured in amperes i hope you're yelling at the screen that's good um all right, so i'm just gonna fix it up here so it looks a little bit prettier there we go what I want to show you though is you can linearize this bad boy. <laughs> what do I mean by linearize? I mean, what if I rewrote this like this? This is going to look a little bit dumb. I'm just going to say R times I. Isn't that the same thing as V equals I R? The reason I'm doing this is I'm going to look at this and see it as a linear graph. Watch this. If I graph this as the Y value and I graphed I as the X value. Do you remember your equation? Like, doesn't it go Y equals M X plus B? Isn't that the equation for a straight line? Look, that means any junk in front of the x value, that's the gradient. So watch carefully. That means if I graph v versus i, see, y versus x, then any junk in front of it is going to be the gradient. So that's why this right here is the gradient, or the slope, if you prefer that word. So that means that this should be a straight line, and it should pass through the origin, because there's no plus anything, right? So it's not shifted up or down. That means then if I draw it right, it should look like, let's see if I can make it look nice and pretty here, something like that. Where we know that the slope, or sorry, the gradient, this is going to be important, the gradient is going to equal the resistance, which is measured in ohms. That's again because the gradient, if you think about it, the gradient, then will be delta y over delta x. So the gradient will be v over i. And hey, Look, that's the definition of a gradient, delta V over delta I. So you can see it all hopefully makes sense. This is called Ohm's law, by the way. Uh, we say that if something is linear, see if the, if the um, relation between the potential difference and the current, if it's a straight line like this, we say this thing is ohmic because it follows Ohm's law. It's possible that it's a curve. And if it's a curve, we say it's non-ohmic. That's how it works, it's nice and simple. Let's go with one other thing now. We're going to talk about resistivity in a wire. This doesn't show up so often. I think it's just good to just to be aware of it. So if you have a wire right here, we could call, uh, we could find the resistance in the wire. Uh, so we're going to, of course, let's just make sure we know the units here. Resistance is just ohms. This is a property. It's called resistivity. You can actually, uh, we'll talk about its units in just a second. The length of the wire, that'll be in meters. I hope that makes sense. That's the length of the wire right here. That'll be in meters. Um, cross-sectional area A, that would be this area right here, and that would be this A. So that would be in meters squared. So look at the units then, it would be ohms, if we do the units for it, it would be in ohms times A, which is in meters squared, divide that by the length, which is in meters. So what happens to the meters? They cancel out. I end up with resistivity's units is ohm meters. So that's why this is in ohm meters. So you don't have to memorize it, just figure it out as you go along. It's actually a nice simple equation, there's not really much to it. I want to get to what there is more to it, which is power. Power dissipated is an energy lost in heating up. This is really important. Resistors themselves, they will heat up. So there will be a loss of energy, you could say. Because you remember, um, we have this trick right here, I just wanted to show you this one. Remember that power is work over time. And if work is a form of energy, then it's energy over time, which means the units for power could be in joules per second. That's one unit. But we also use the unit for we the unit we use for power. Do you know what we use for units for power? It's awesome. What's the unit for power? What's the unit for power? It's a watt. That's a really dumb joke. So the unit for power, we call it a watt. 
but a watt is also the same thing as a joule per second. So this is a really important trick, I think, is knowing this right here, okay? This is really, really important. This will make your life a lot easier in the IP, very often. In fact, if you get really complicated questions where you're mixing different topics, like mechanics, for example, uh, that's being mixed with uh, this kind of thing, then this becomes really important. This is how you can mix, like, I don't know, you have a... You have a motor that lifts up something in a certain amount of time, and so you could figure out, see the energy you've, you know, uh, that you've used to do that. Then they would say, uh, "What's the current in this thing?" And you think, "How do I link mechanics with electricity stuff?" This is how, because you can get to this energy. And once you know about energy over time, that is the same thing as power in watts, which means that's the same thing as this one here. So the power is normally just written as I times V, so it's the current times the potential difference. But if you use V equals IR, see that you could replace uh, for I. So what if you got I by itself? Could you see that I is also equal to V over R then? So then instead of I, you would replace I with V over R. Can you see that? So if you replace this I with V over R, you'd have V times V over R. That's why you get V squared over R. And if you used uh, this one right here, but instead you replaced V with IR, so where every time I see a V here instead, I replace it with an IR. So I have I times IR, so that's I squared R. That's why this formulation and this one with I squared R and V squared over R are actually, all three are the same formulation. It just depends on which value were you given. Because remember, in, uh, in Ohm's law is the way of finding out the third thing. In other words, if you know in a circuit the potential difference and the current, then you can find resistance. Or if you know resistance and current, you can know the potential difference. And if you know the resistance, potential difference, you can know the current. This is like your conversion factor. This is how you get, you know, if you know two of them, you know the third one. So this is why it's really important. And you have this version of power that has any of the two pairs of values that you know, whatever is most suitable for you. So P is the power. And like I said, we measure in watts. That's it. That's all you need for power dissipated. So dissipated really means energy lost. Now let's do an example. So now we have a circuit below. We're supposed to find the power dissipated in the entire circuit. So my goal then is to find out what's the power right here. You know, if that makes any sense, like the power sort of at the battery, that's taking into account all this junk here going on. And this should be easy then. The power is just I times V. So do you see that if I just knew the current here, if I just knew the current here, or I could call IT, let's just say, if I knew that, wouldn't it be easy? I would just do eight times that current and I'd have my answer. Great. Okay, what's the current? Uh, I'm not sure. Or remember, I could have also, what if I knew the resistance here? You know, if I knew the resistance here, then I could also do it because I could use uh, P equals V squared over R or I could do I squared R. I guess it depends on which one I feel like doing. But do you see I'm missing one of these stages? I find a lot of times in the answer keys, it's not clear what you should be finding. This is why I'm trying to show you the intuition for it, the, the logic behind doing it, or maybe illogic, I don't know. So do you see how I need one of these values to do it? There's a number of ways, of course, of solving these. You could figure out the power dissipated in each of them, that's sure. Sure you could. But just for fun, let's just uh, use this uh, analogy stuff that I've been showing you before and let's see if this can make sense. So we could consider this, um, I could redraw this circuit. And I always like to redraw them, that's how I like to do them. So I'm gonna redraw this circuit because can you see I've got, I've got a parallel circuit that's in series with this thing. So I'm gonna try to just redraw because I love to do that. I'm just gonna say two ohms here. I'm gonna try to redraw it as just this. I think it's going to look a lot easier. So now i got to figure out what's this result. In other words, what do I do about this? I can say 1 over RP. I like to call it parallel resistance. And if you remember your rule for parallel resistors, 1 over R equals 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. Because I have a same denominator, I can say then it's two, 1 plus 1, which is 2 over 4. So my answer is RP equals 2 over 4, right? No. RP. This is 1 over RP is 2 over 4. Therefore, RP is 4 over 2. So if that makes any sense, then four divided by two is just two. So it's two ohms. Good, then that's how I get this. Now I've redrawn it as this. So now I've got a circuit. It's a lot simpler already, isn't it? So now I just look at it like this. Do you see I can take one step further? I can say, all right then, let's take one step further and draw it as just one single resistor. Does that make any sense? Now I'm saying it, now there's two resistors in series. 
And instead of series resistors, I like to draw it. Uh, remember the rule for resistors in series? You can just do the sum of them. So 2 plus 2 equals 4. So this is like one single 4 ohm resistor. So if that makes any sense now, now I know this value right. Watch this. I know this value right here. That value is 4 ohms. So now, I gotta make sure it looks like a four, don't I? So this right here is uh, everything I needed. Remember I needed the oh, two of these three quantities. So if I'm not sure, remember look, I've got the potential difference, I've got V and I've got R. So let's look at an equation for the power. If I've got V and R, it goes V squared over R. So all I have to do now is go right here. I'm just gonna change the color here. That means now I finally have power is just going to be v squared over r. So in this case, remember my v is 8. So I put an 8 squared, divide that by 4. Now 8 squared is 16, right? No. Remember that's what a lot of people think. Uh, 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. 64 divided by 4. If you're not too sure about that, you can always reduce it. You can always uh, divide them both by 2, let's just say. So that's 32 over 2, uh, which hopefully that makes it more clear that it's 16. So finally, my power then is 16 watts. That's the unit of power. Do you see I could have also done it by ca calculating the current? I could have done that. There's a number of ways of doing it right there. So you could have actually found the current and done it that way. There's lots of ways of doing it, but I think this is one really good way. And I hope you see that it's not actually so hard.